those of you just and, joining, um, it's uh, well, this is Dan and Don from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com, and we're interviewing Dr. Nick Bennett. He is a freelance scientific consultant, entrepreneur, physician, and researcher from Syracuse, New York, and he does um, pediatric infectious diseases, and uh, he does clinical trials. He's got a lot of experience, and he's kind of uh, telling us a little bit about him. So um, welcome to the program, Nick, and thank you for your time today. Hi, Dan. Yeah, no problem. So you were just so, talking uh, about kind of like what you do um, as your day-to-day -day kind of work? So day-to-day <clears throat> -day really, um, really varies as to, as to regards to studies. Um, the studies are kind of seasonal <laughs> in a way. Um, a lot of the vaccine work can go on um, in the winter. I don't know why that is. It just seems to be the way it is. But you're either doing a lot of enrollment, which is very hectic, um, or you're doing a lot of follow-up, which is a little more tedious but um, busy because uh, you've got a lot of patients to follow. The kind of um, studies we're involved with, like, like I said, are more vaccine work. And they're really good, it's good studies for the kids to be in because they're usually involved in vaccines that have been approved for adults already, or for older children, okay. or in, in some cases, there are vaccines that have been approved in other countries already, and they're just coming to the United States. So from a clinical trials perspective, you've got a, got a really nice study, which is really minimal risk to the families. You're not trying out a brand new medication that no one's heard of. Right. You're not, you're not trying something that's not been tested in kids before, or tested in people before. And uh, it makes it a nice, easy sell, if you like, if you think of it in terms of sales. It's a nice, easy sell to the family. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of potential benefit to the children. Um, a good example of this is um, one of the studies I was put in charge of this summer was for a Hib vaccine. Um, Hib um, is Haemophilus influenza type B. And we've had a vaccine shortage of that for a little while to the point that the FDA was looking around for new companies to bring in because uh, contrary to, I think, popular belief, vaccines are not a big money maker and there's not a lot of people who want to make vaccines. So there's only two or three companies that actually make this particular vaccine. Hmm. And the FDA wanted to bring in a new supplier. Uh, and thankfully, there was one who's got a big track record over in Europe. So you know, you've got this new vaccine for the U.S., that's got a 10-year track record or more um, with tens of thousands of children who've received this um, in, in, the, in a clinical trial setting around the world. So there's a lot of safety data, and you can go to families and say, you know, this is a vaccine that's very important. We've seen outbreaks of this infection because of the vaccine shortage in places like Minnesota. Right. And, um, and you can say to them, you know, it, it's, not, it's no different than the vaccine your kid would get anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a different manufacturer. Now, and, doctor, uh, I had a, I had a question. That's study that we really like to do because it helps, you know, bring in new companies uh, to the market. It helps bring in new products, which make in the long run makes it better for people. Right. For the fact that we get a shortage. Now, doctor, I had a question for you. We interviewed a, a doctor who reminds me a lot of you uh, a couple weeks ago. He was a collect. Uh, cholesterol expert and he's done clinical trials mm -hmm. and he says he turns down studies where there's placebo involved because he does not want to offer his patients a study where he's not a hundred percent sure it may benefit them um, and it right. kind of sounds like you're on the same page there as far as your uh, strict selection as far as what studies you will participate in are there ever any trials that you will not participate in? Uh, I haven't I mean, I'm, I'm early on in my career, but I haven't seen one yet. Actually, I can think of one. There, there are a couple where um, you, you see the protocol and you see the papers, that, you know, the background that goes into it, and you know the disease, and you think, I'm not really sure this is going to help. And <clears throat> it's not necessarily a study that you, um, you turn down right off the bat, and that's partly because I'm not always the one in charge of turning down the studies. But mm -hmm. there are certainly studies where if you, you sit down as a group, as a division, you talk about it and you say, I really don't see how this is going to work. And you know, examples of that might be, you know, intravenous therapies for infections, which you would treat as an outpatient. And you have to ask yourself, who in their right mind is going to go to their doctor for, you know, an outpatient visit and get an intravenous treatment? Um, 
it's not as though it's, you know, a particularly bad drug or one that's going to put the patient at risk, but you just can't see that being a useful study for the study patient. And you can't, it's hard to make it, you know, to look ahead to the next phase and say, how is this going to be a marketable product, you know, in that format? Um, or there are particular infections where, you know, the, the way the treatment is, is offered or the way the treatment is presented, um, you can't say that it's going to really help um, that particular, even if it's just a viral infection and, and the, the kid's likely to get over it anyway. Um, it's difficult to say, you know, I don't know if there's going to be benefit. I won't necessarily turn down a placebo study um, if the treatment that's being offered is better than the standard of care. Because sometimes the standard of care is you do nothing, um, in which case the placebo is the same as the standard. Right. And gotcha. the and the medication you're offering might be, might be better than that if mm-hmm. you look at some of the background mm-hmm. literature and the background science. But you have to be um, extremely upfront with the, with the family. I mean, the consent process for clinical trials is very rigorous, and you have to say, you know, there is this is the odds. You know, it's either one in two or one in three, or whatever it is that your child or you may not get the treatment, or you may get the the regular treatment. You won't get the study treatment. Um, you need a good comparison in order to get results out of the study. And uh, the best comparison is a placebo because um, that gives you your baseline level of how people are going to respond normally. Um, if you don't have a placebo, then it makes the study that a little bit more difficult to, um, to get results out of. And sometimes that means that you need thousands and thousands of people in the study. And, um, one of the studies I was involved with, the first, one of the very first ones I did was a global study I'm looking for a, a prevention. It wasn't a vaccine, but it was an antibody that was given to kids to prevent RSV, which is a serious virus infection. And they needed something like 7,000 children worldwide in this study because they were giving them um, the, the standard of care, which was an, another antibody. So you, you were enrolling people in the study, and it wasn't placebo. You'd say, you're either going to get the standard treatment or the new treatment. Uh, and they needed 7,000 kids in order to show that there was a difference between the two medications. At the end of the day, it wasn't even approved by the FDA. Um, So all that work uh, put into it over years ended up reaching a dead end. Um, And unfortunately, that's what sometimes happens. Even if you've got a good medication on paper, uh, it doesn't always pan out that the FDA can can work on that. Right. Uh, Dr. Bennett, uh, this is Don. I want to just change uh, direction a little bit. I'm very curious, can you explain to us uh, what managing uh, the uh, Samurai Scientific, can you explain what that is? The Samurai Scientific? Yes, very curious. (laughs) (laughs) Samurai Scientific is um, is almost my hobby on the side. It's a business I set up about, um, about six years ago, five, six years ago. Uh, for data analysis, and it actually was born out of frustration um, with my some of my work I was having to do um, in the research field, particularly with data analysis, mm-hmm. and then later on with clinical trial management, um, particularly with the big studies. The biggest study I, I was involved with locally I had nearly 200 kids involved, and that was wow. just one of several, and you're having to keep track of visit dates and making sure that everyone's got their blood tests done and they don't miss appointments and don't miss phone calls. um, You can do it with um, spreadsheets and things, but it becomes a a big deal. And especially if you're managing multiple studies that are kind of similar in what you're doing with the the protocols, but different enough that if you you Mm -hmm. get it wrong, you'll screw up that particular study. So I started writing software to um, address a bunch of these issues and set up the company to... Um, just helped me run that um, professionally. And although the, the clinical trial side of things has mostly just been kind of work on the side, the thing that has taken off most has been the data analysis. And I've been involved in several projects with um, physicians locally who are doing, clin- who are doing clinical research or doing lab research and to help them with their number crunching. And it's, the tools I've built for them are basically custom database tools, so data collection, data organization, mm-hmm. data analysis. And the idea is that you can go from your raw data um, and plug it into the right
AI software, the investigator then gets to play with it and cut and paste and and uh, look at different aspects very, very quickly. So you're not spending days and weeks trying to analyze it by hand or send it off to someone else to do the number crunching. You can play with it yourself and, and get quick, quick results. Um, okay. they're, not, they're not as nice yet as the best results you'll get with the best statistics packages that we're getting there. Hmm. Um, but ultimately, is you get quick results, um, and you can play with it. You can look at your data in different ways very quickly, and that's something that is very powerful, where you can very quickly say, this avenue of research isn't going to work, but if we look at it in a different way, it will work. And so you can focus your efforts to focus how your analysis is going to be very much more quickly. Quite impressive. Uh, and that's, that's kind of been floating along. That's been a nice sideline for me to get that done. Where do you have the time? When I've got the time, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I guess it sounds like you're extremely busy. So I mean, the day's just been a busy day, so I think you, uh, you got lucky in the end, but it's been one of these hectic days. Well, we pre we appreciate you stopping long enough to share with uh, everyone out there what you do. That's all right. Any time. Yeah, and we always so, hopefully we, we can chat again when I've got a, a little less on my plate and I can go into a bit more detail on the studies. Yeah, we'll definitely do that, and we, we just did a video where we talk about how it's really important for the patient to be able to choose mm -hmm. their own clinic and not have the clinics choose them, and the reason for that is you want to find doctors like Dr. Bennett who are looking out for you um, as his patients, and mm -hmm. they won't just put you into any clinical trial. They're going to actually do their homework and make sure that the study is appropriate for you mm -hmm. before they enroll you. So. This just proves our point that you want to do the homework yourself, find the clinic. You shouldn't let the clinic necessarily find you, although it's not always a bad idea either. But the reason is you want to find doctors like Dr. Bennett who are conducting clinical That's trials. Right. Dr. Bennett, if someone wants to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Um, well, I'm, I've got my... Get me a hold of me on Twitter. That <laughs> works for you. Okay. Um, so I'm... I'm Pete underscore ID underscore doc, uh, Pete's ID doc on Twitter. Um, I have the Samurai Scientific website, which is samuraiscientific.com. Um, and pretty much those are, those are two guaranteed ways to get hold of me. My, my work email is going to change, so I can't really give that out because that will change in a, in, a few, um, in a few months. And I've got a regular email, uh, which is uh, njb35 at cantab.net, C-A-N-T-A-B.net. Okay. So, uh, Twitter, email, website, whichever's going to work. Yeah, I'll put all of those on the, uh, the end of the day. We'll include all of those on the blog post when it's up and live on the site. Thank you very much, Dr. Bennett. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. All right, thanks, Dan. Thank we'll you. talk later. So, this is Don and Dan uh, signing off from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Don? What'd you think? I thought it was wonderful. This gentleman, I, from my standards, is, is for me, I would say he's quite brilliant. Well, it's always, uh, always kind of interesting, as I make sure I turn the phone off, it's always interesting when we hear the perspective of a doctor. Mm -hmm. Because we just did this video where we encourage you, if you're a potential study participant, to find your clinical trial. Find it yourself, and the reason is you want to be proactive. With something as important as your health or as a clinical trial, you want to make sure that you end up, if you're going to end up in a study, you want to end up in a study like doc, with Dr. Bennett as the PI. Well, Dr. Bennett uh, hit on one key point, and he's always honest with his families that he worked with when he's, because he's dealing with the adolescents in this uh, trials that he's involved in, but he's always honest with the families. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that honesty out there and uh, also someone with the skill set that he has, which um, definitely is a major plus. Yeah, so if anyone has questions for Dr. Bennett, let us know and we'll have his contact info on the blog when it's live. Thank Absolutely. you very much. It's Dan and Don from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thanks a lot.